What's in the bag? In this video, I'm gonna open up this giant box of comics I paid $55 for. This package from Aspen Comics. This mystery package of comics I paid $20 for. This mystery bag of comics that someone gave me for free. And this cool collection of comics I bought last weekend. Hello YouTube friends and neighbors, it's another comic video. I love the comic videos. Opening up comic books, showing you guys comics is one of my favorite things to do. I wish they were as popular as the Funko Pop videos because I'd probably do them every day if they were. They take a lot more work to edit. I love to edit the videos so they just flow really fast so you can really just enjoy the comic books and there's not as much talking in between each comic book. I love doing them but they're a lot of work but I'm going to still continue to try to do them once a week. I really love doing them. Uh, today we're going to open up one mystery bag of comic books that someone gave us for free to my shop. I have no idea what's in it. My wife said it looked like a bunch of like fanzines and some comic books and stuff. So it's going to be a complete surprise. Hopefully there's something really awesome. I mean, if there's if it's all goofy junk, I'm still happy because I love fanzines and kind of oddball stuff. I got a cool collection of modern comics that someone who regularly sells to us brought in this past weekend. And it was some stuff I was actually looking for. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, one small package from Aspen Comics. A giant mystery box of 120 or so comic books for $55. I bought it like two months ago, so I don't remember what it is. And one other small mystery package. So let's start digging into this stuff. Okay, let's dig into this package. Okay, so this package I paid $21.85 and it's supposed to have 20 or so comics. Uh, I don't remember what it is. I bought this months ago. I bought a bunch of mystery boxes so I had stuff for the channel every comic day and I just ran out of time to get through them in July. So I'm just trying to get through all of them and I think it's gonna be more fun because it'll be an extra surprise. Or maybe I'll be like, why the heck did I buy this? <laughs> Uh, the packaging job kind of sucks. It was just comic books inside the bubble envelope and that corner looks dinged. But let's see what we got here. Oh, okay. That's cool. Detective Comics 660. For a dollar, that's actually not bad. Oh, I wonder if there's all Batman stuff in here. Oh, okay. That's cool too. Amazing Spider-Man number 400. I'd buy that for a dollar all day long. Uh, Web of Spider-Man 115 dollars about appropriate price for that. Uh, oh, this is cool. Batman 500. Okay, this is looking good. Okay, Hawkman 13. That's kind of a cheaper comic book. Uh, oh, okay. This is probably why I bought these. So we have we have Green Lantern 48 first appearance of Kyle Rayner. Uh, it looks like it's in good shape. I don't see any ticks or anything. So it's a very fine denier mint. Uh, I mean, that's a $10, $15 comic. So a dollar for that's awesome. And there's also number 49, which I love that cover. That's a, probably another $10 comic. So a dollar a piece on those is awesome. Heck, the $20 for the lot is worth it for those two comics. And then everything else would be free at that point. Uh, let's see if there's anything of value other than those, though. Primal Force, number zero. Uh, Superman, 82. Web of Spider-Man, 117. Justice League Task Force 16. So it's free, but, but a lot of stuff that's not worth too much. Uh, Batman 492, that's kind of cool. Uh, Batman 511. Even if the, I mean, the Batman stuff, I can get a dollar or two out of if I have them already. So I like getting lots like this if it has enough little filler stuff that I don't need that I can get rid of. That way, you know, the stuff I do keep becomes cheaper. Robin number 10. Zero Hour number 4. Green Lantern 55, Superman 516, Zero Hour number 2, Catwoman number 14. So the rest of this lot looks like it's kind of, oh, this is kind of cool. Batman 495. So overall, it uh, has a lot of kind of weaker stuff. Some Batmans I can get a buck or two, uh, but there's at least three comic books here that are probably $10 plus comic books. So even paying $20 for these three, Amazing Spider-Man 400, Green Lantern 49, and Green Ford Lantern number 48, definitely worth, you know, $20 for that three is awesome. If I could get $10 back, 10 to maybe even $20 on the rest of the stuff, you know, it means I end up paying between $10 and nothing for those three. So awesome, awesome. I forgot I bought those. That was actually a really good deal. All right, let's open up this package. Okay, let me open up this package from Aspen Comics. I think with shipping, it was $20. It's more than I like to pay for. A, it's a single new comic book. And I just, all these website exclusives are, you know, $10, $15, $20 each. It's a little bit overwhelming. I'm cheap. <laughs> I won't find my comic books for a dollar. So here we go. It's a beautiful cover. It's a Michael Turner... I believe Metal was the series, a Michael Turner Metal Virgin variant. Now, it's part of a set. There's a Batman in the middle, and I believe Superman on the other side. Uh, I didn't want to pay $50, $60 for three brand new comic books that 
have nothing special other than really beautiful covers. So since I usually collect Wonder Woman and the female characters, I decided I'm just going to get the one because I just really loved the cover. I thought it was beautiful. Do I feel like I overpaid a $20? Yeah, it's a brand new comic book. $20 for a brand new comic book? Ah, it just seems like I'm overpaying. But I, when I saw the artwork for the cover, I fell in love with it. I had to have it. So I splurged. Every once in a while, I will splurge. There's so many other comics stuffed by Art Germ, some J. Scott Campbell, some of these other special covers that they're releasing lately. I kind of want them. The Adi Granoff. So anyway, uh, I, I just, I really like the cover. <laughs> okay, on to the next package. Let me show you what's in this collection. I am going to show you guys this collection I bought this last weekend. Now, this guy's been bringing me stuff, I'd say, once every couple weeks to once a month. And it's always really awesome stuff. I like the way, you know, the toys he collected, the comics he collected. It's all stuff that I personally like a lot. So I'm so excited whenever he shows up with stuff. And he just wants to get rid of it to make room. He's got too much stuff in his house, he says. And he's always very, he seems so thankful when I give him a, a decent offer. He's happy and I'm happy because it's all stuff I really like. So let's go through this collection. All right, we got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 45. I believe there's a bunch of Turtles comics and I gave him $1.50 a piece. Number 46. Now let me know if there's any covers I missed that would be worth more than like a $5 price. Just because I'll give him a little bit more the next time I see him. Number 54. That's a sub cover. Number 44. Number 47. These are really cool. And I was so happy to get these because I don't have a lot of these. Uh, number 49. Number 72. Number 51, number 53, number 50, Dark Days, the casting, number one. It's a cool, like, foily cover. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number 68, number 69, number 65, number 67, number 63, number 64. Number 61. Ah, so happy to get a whole run of these. These are cool. Number 62. Number 59. Number 60. Number 57. Number 58. Number 55. Number 56. Okay, and then that was all the turtle stuff. And then the next thing he brought in was something I really, really want to put a set together because I keep hearing good things about it. And the prices have been shooting up. So I was thrilled that he brought these in. So we got 7 to Eternity. Now this is number one, but it's a second printing. So sadly, it wasn't first printing. The first printing now is what, 30, 40, 50 bucks. I'm not 100% sure. But I'm happy we have number one because I can read it at least. And uh, we'll eventually hunt down a first printing. But we also have number six, first print. Number five, the first print. Number four, the first print. Number three, first print. And number two, first print. I think number two, I gave him $10. And I think the rest of them, $2 a piece. Either way, I was just really happy to get these. That was pretty awesome. And then he had a Tank Girl 1 graphic novel. I think I gave him five dollars for that i thought that was really cool and one of the coolest things to me in his collection was this art of he-man book uh this book is so awesome it has a lot of let's look at it it's got pictures of sketches of the ideas toy pictures comics it just talks about he-man uh more concept sketches animation cells this random piece of paper uh so from the cartoon you know more idea sketches oh this book is beautiful i think i gave him five dollars for it i think you can get a copy on amazon i think it was like 10 to 12 dollars plus shipping so you might be able to get one for 10 to 15 and I think it's worth it. It's just a really awesome book. I'm so happy to get it for a good price. Let's open up this giant mystery box. All right, so <laughs> this box is too big for me to show you on the camera, but it's just another giant mystery box. This one I think is more of a mystery. I don't remember if there was what I saw that I liked. It might have had some Batman adventures or something, but it was 120-ish to 140 comics for $55. So it is about 40 cents a piece. And you know me, I love a good mystery box. So 
Let's dig through it. See if I got anything. <laughs> Maybe it was all junk. I don't know. We will see in a minute. And I bought this box like two months ago, so I'm completely clueless what's inside. Okay, uh, I got it out of that big box. So it was actually a full short box. Uh, and I got packing peanuts everywhere now. <laughs> no packing peanuts. Okay, so let's start digging into this box. At least the price was cheap per comic, so I think there's a good chance that I got good value. But I won't know until we start digging through it. We'll just take a quick look at what it looks like on top. That's what it looks like. So nothing's bagged. Hopefully, that just means it's someone who bought them and read them and just threw them in there. So they're a little beat up, but there might be some treasure in this box. Uh, okay, and just on the top, I'm reading names like Animaniacs, Archie, Batman... Disney, Pinky and the Brain, Simpsons, Spider-Man, Superman. So I think it might have been a lot of kids' comics, which I like buying if it's the Simpsons, that kind of stuff. Which, okay, the first handful is Simpsons. That's cool. So we got Simpsons 34, Batman Adventures number 3. Uh, oh, huh. Got cited for a second. Ultimate Spider-Man number 1, but it's the free comic book day reprint. A Star Wars Tales free comic book day comic book. Justice League Adventures, free comic book day comic book. Hopefully it's not a whole bunch of free comic book day comic book. <laughs> Tomb Raider. Although I don't know if I have a lot from around this time. So if I don't have it, I'm happy to add it to my collection. Uh, this is cool. Batman 657. Okay, we got Batman Adventures number one. I, I'm hoping this collection wasn't picked through and there's a couple of Harley issues. That would be really cool. Batman Adventures, The Lost Years, number four. Hulk, 426. Fantastic Four, Unplugged. I'm not sure the number on that. Hulk, 425, hologram cover. It's kind of cool. Kind of beat up, though. A uh, poster of some sort. Betty and Veronica, number 209, but in really bad shape. Archie, 472. Archie, 448. And Batman, 490. So, so far, the condition is kind of beat up. I can't see anything jumping out at me as super awesome. But, again, I like getting mystery boxes like this because it's fun to film them. But even if they suck, it's still entertaining for everyone. I mean, I like it at least. Do you guys like seeing the random comic lots? Any Animaniacs number 21. Animaniacs number 22. Animaniacs number 11. Animaniacs number 3. I bet some of these are a bit collectible. Animaniacs number eight. Animaniacs number four. Animaniacs number 20. Number 18. This next bin says it's Pinky and the Brain. So let's see what we got here. We got Pinky and the Brain number 19. Again, these are probably a little bit collectible as well, except they're not in the best condition. Number 14. Number two. Number seven. Number six, number nine, number one, number three. This one's got a dog ear right there, though. Number five, number 18, and uh, number 19. So, uh, again, nothing too exciting. But these, I mean, if I put these in my store, I'd probably get a dollar or two out of them. So I think the value is there on these just because people love the nostalgia stuff, the stuff they grew up with. So if you're, you know, in your 20s, this is something you probably would want. This dog here is driving me nuts. <laughs> so I, I, I'm i probably going to keep these because I don't know how many Pinky and the Brain comics I have. But if I ever get duplicates, definitely good thing to sell. And okay, this next one. Let's see, all of them have, they were all kind of labeled. So this one, next one's Archie. Although it's not an Archie on the front. We got a uh, Aladdin. Movie adaptation, Batman Adventures number six. That's cool. Coverless Archie. That sucks. Uh, everything's Archie 157, Archie 447, Archie 437, but in really bad shape. Archie 464, Jughead 72, Archie and Friends 21, Archie 449. Archie 465 and Archie Spring Break number three. Now the thing with Archies, I do collect Archies, but I try to only collect stuff that's bronze and silver. So I might end up selling these, but Archies are really popular in my store. Every time I put them out for a dollar, dollar fifty, they sell. So good price. 35, 40 cents a piece on those is a good price. That stuff I don't mind getting too much of. I'm hoping the section that says Batman has a lot more Batman adventures though. Batman 500, this is in a poly bag. I don't know if I've seen the one in the poly bag. I wonder if that one's a little bit rarer. That's cool. Simpson Comics number 22. 
Batman Adventures number six, Batman 498, and Batman Adventures number 26. So far, I'm assuming the Batman Adventure stuff was picked through, but gotta take a gamble sometimes. Roger Rabbit number three, this one's in terrible shape. It's like all taped up. Uh, Web of Spider-Man 117, Donald and Mickey number 25, uh, Walt Disney's Comics and Stories 596, Donald and Mickey 22. I suspect Disney stuff I'd probably be able to get a dollar or two as well in my shop, so I'm not so worried about having these. Not something that I'm looking for at the moment for my collection, but I do like Disney, so I'll probably end up keeping these. Uh, Donald Duck Adventures number 25, Donald Duck Adventures number 38, uh, Donald Duck 34. And not that I'm rushing to sell any of this stuff. I just, if I did sell it, I could probably make some profit. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, Pink Panther number seven. That one is kind of ratty. Uh, this is a shame. Daffy Duck, gold key comic, but in really bad shape. If it was in a little bit better shape, I'd be excited for that. DuckTales number four, also kind of bad shape. A lot of these are kind of ratty. That's a shame. All right, Kmart, Taz's 40th birthday blowout. Again, kind of ratty. I can't even get them to stand. <laughs> Little Lotta, number one. Wonder Woman, 65 without its cover. Star Trek, 44. Star Trek The Next Generation, number 44. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, we got uh, Turtles the Movie trade paperback. That's kind of cool. This is cool. It's kind of in bad shape, though. But The Goon, number 16. I do want to find all the earlier goons to put the set together. Superman 82, Justice League Quarterly number 10, and Avengers 281. Next stack is uh, just marked Marvel DC Superheroes. So cross your fingers, I hope it's something awesome in this stack. Okay, we got Wonder Woman 86, kind of damaged though. That's a shame, kind of a fun cover though. X-Men number eight, Green Lantern Corpse number four. Again, off the top of my head, I don't think any of this has value, but if you guys notice something I missed, let me know. Iron Man 206, Justice League 222. Oh, this is cool. Not in the best shape, but Wonder Woman 72. I guess it's a fine. That one is actually probably a five to ten dollar comic, even in that condition. So that's cool. Found one good comic. <laughs> We'll put that to the side. I remember I paid 55 for the box. So if I get a couple more like that, we'll be in good shape. Flash 74, Flash 78, Justice League Spectacular number one, but it's missing its cover, sadly. Green Lantern Mosaic number 10, Captain America 414, Justice League Europe number 48. Okay, another little minor key, but in terrible condition. X-Force number two, second parents of Deadpool, but it's it's got a big tear on the back cover, so that's that's a shame. But what are you gonna do? I might still get a dollar or two out of it. Justice Society number eight. Robin three number six. Showcase ninety three number three. Catwoman. Guy Gardner number six. Seven eleven comic from the seventies. That looks cool, but it's in terrible condition. Iron Man two ninety four. Justice League America number seventy two. Green Lantern number thirty seven. Superman number seven. Terrible condition. Archie number 450. Ren and Snippy Show number 24. Bugs Bunny number 2. Alright, so we're about two thirds of the way through the box and only one sort of better key issue. So, I mean, unless I might miss, maybe picking the brain or something's worthwhile and I'm just missing it. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. I have to look up all this stuff because I'm seeing it for the first time as you guys see it. Okay, Pinky and the Brain number 11. Oh, these are fun. Ren and Snippy Show, number 17. Again, not anything super valuable, but in my shop, Ren and Snippy, I could get, you know, two bucks all day long because people love Ren and Snippy. Uh, the Powered Toast Man special, number 18. And these are in slightly better shape, 22. I mean, still got a few spine ticks, but they're not totally trashed. Number 15, number 26. And for me, it's good news because I have a full run of Ren and Stimpy. So these, I'll just throw them out. I mean, if there's 20 Ren and Stimpies here, I'll, I'll get my money back. This was not that bad of a lot. Number 12, number 37, number 42. So that's cool. Next, we got a section that says Simpsons. So we'll see what Simpsons have potential. All right, this is cool. Simpsons trade paperback. I get 5 to $10 on those all day long in my shop. So I'm happy to get that, actually. Simpsons Illustrated Magazine. A little bit wrinkled up. 
Oh, this one is cool. Uh, Treehouse of Horrors number one. These I think are a bit collectible. If I remember correctly, these are five to ten dollars easily. And number two. Okay, we got two more comics I would consider kind of better, more awesome comics. Okay, we got uh, Simpsons 24. Simpsons again is another comic that every time I put them out in my shop, if they're kind of beat up like this, so I put them out for a dollar fifty to two dollars. They sell, and if they're in very fine near me, I put them out for three to four, and they sell. People just love the Simpsons, especially people from other countries. Simpsons number three. Simpsons number seven, Bartman number five, Radioactive Man number 1000. And I don't know if I have all these issues in my collection, so I'm really happy to get these. Number 29, uh, here's another nice one, another Treehouse of Horrors, number three. I think this one doesn't sell quite as much as number one and two, but still very cool. And number 33. Okay, that was a cool part of the box. I really like the Simpsons stuff. I think the Simpsons might have even been what I saw in the picture. If I remember the auction had it's like full short box of comic books and then it had like three or four comics out. I think they were Simpson comic books, so that is what caught my attention. That's the thing, I don't mind gambling on Simpson comics because I know no matter what, I can always sell the Simpsons comics, get my money back, and then everything else is free, and just hopefully something within the free stuff is worth it. <laughs> okay, another coverless comic book. I think this one is detached. Untold Tales of Spider-Man number three, number eight, number 19, Spider-Man number 44, Spider-Man number 70, Spider-Man Adventures number 15, Marvel Tales 282, and Spectacular Spider-Man 114. Nothing too exciting in Spider-Man. Those are all maybe dollar issues, if that. Okay, let's see what we're down to. Last handful. Let's cross our fingers. Cross your fingers, everyone. Cross your fingers. I want one knockout comic in this last stack, I hope. Okay, we got Superman Adventures number three. That's cool. I do like the, the comics based on the 90s cartoons. I really like those. Superman 76, Superman 21, 31, 77, 535. I'm going through these slowly. <laughs> Crossing my fingers. Come on, something awesome. 499. It's all Superman, though. There's only a couple issues I can count on being of value. 718, 114, 505. Uh, Legacy of Superman number one. World's Finest 302. It's kind of cool. Mid 80s. 314. Oh, cool. So the very last comic book is the first appearance of Livewire. <laughs> yes! Yes! I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I didn't set that up or anything. I wasn't expecting that. What is that worth? Oh, it's, and it's in good shape. It's maybe a very fine... It looks like it has a little bit of uh, staining here. Maybe very light. But I don't see any major rips or creases. Uh, maybe up here a little teeny bit, but not bad. Okay, this box paid out in the last pick. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all. But that's exactly why I buy lots like this, because there's a high chance that you're going to find those key issues, and there's a lot of them in the Batman Adventures, and Superman Adventures has a couple. So anytime I see a random lot that has those, I'll give it a chance. Now, this issue in this condition is probably like a $30, maybe $40 on the right day. I'm so happy with that. Uh, Treehouse of Horrors number one in this condition. You know, it's a fine plus, very fine minus because it has a couple of spine ticks. That's probably still a maybe a $10 comic. Number three, again, in that same maybe fine condition because it has a few spine ticks. That's a 5 to $10 comic. And number two, this one also looks... Uh, maybe a very fine because I don't it has a little bit of slight amount of scuff on it But I don't see any major creases on it. So that's maybe a 10 to 15 dollar comic So you got 30 40 50 60 and then that's maybe a five dollar comic So so those five right there that's easily the 55 dollar value I paid for everything So basically if I sold those I would break even everything else would be free uh, and Although the way I work is I usually sell the cheap stuff and keep the better stuff I, I like being a gold mine that keeps the gold and sells the dirt if I can break even, I am super happy. So I, I actually, I really think I did great with this lot. And if there's 50, you know, 50 plus nostalgia comics, the Pinky and the Brain, Animaniacs, the Disney stuff, the Ren and Snippy, that stuff sells really easily in my shop. Especially people from other countries that are coming and they want to grab some American culture. They, you know, maybe they're coming from Japan and they, they'll pick that stuff up. They'll pay a dollar or two all day long. So I could easily get fifty hundred dollars from the Archies and all those other ones I just mentioned and keep those. So I actually, I 
think this was a great deal. At first, I was going through them like, ah, I don't know. But then I started hitting a couple of, like, when I hit those, the horror, Treehouse of Horrors, that went uphill. And then the very last comic I got to look at was a, definitely a key issue. Awesome! Ah, I love the gamble when it pays out. It's so much fun. It's fun to collect that way. Let's explore this bag and see what's inside it. Next, let's go through this mystery bag. I have no idea what's in it. My wife said some guy just dropped it off. He said he wanted nothing for it. He was moving. He just wanted to get rid of them. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be a complete mystery. Now, she did a quick look. She said it looked like zines and indie comics. So it might be nothing of value, but it might be some interesting things. Okay. <laughs> and a lot of this stuff, I'm probably not even going to know. Because just looking at the first thing, we got when the joggers run. The, I don't know what that is. Super indie comic. Oh, this one looks kind of cool. We came in peace for all mankind. And the artwork looks kind of fun. That's cool. I actually like getting things like this because it's stuff you normally don't see. And sometimes it's really interesting. Thingy. All right, you guys are going to see a lot of oddball indie comics today. Baboom. I can't even read what this is. Blur, slur, something, number eight. <laughs> Future Shock, number four. That cover actually looks really cool. Oh, and it's fun inside. I mean, it's kind of simple indie, but very colorful. I, I I like this. This is actually really cool. Oh, this is this is awesome. I love stuff like this. All right, awesome. Next we have, and if you any of you guys know if any of these are rare, valuable. I mean, I'm sure they're all rare because they're very indie or self-produced. But if you know if any of them are really collectible or valuable, let me know. This is new character i don't know what that is it looks cool though oh it's one of 300 signed by the comic creator oh it looks kind of cool i like that that's the thing this stuff is rare because a lot of it's probably only printed in the hundreds because there's you know little self-produced scenes and comics but i love collecting stuff like that okay we got morons number one and again it's the artwork isn't like blowing me away and awesome, but to me, it just looks really cool. I love kind of indie, you know, it's not drawn with a high skill, but it's drawn with a lot of detail. So it makes it look interesting. And I like that. I think that's really cool. Oh, this is fun. This is going to be a lot of stuff I have no idea anything about, but it's just going to be a fun adventure trying to explore through these. Okay, next we have live at the something and uh, it just looks really cool i love color indie comics like that oh that's really cool usa magazine i don't know what that is but that looks cool is that british or french maybe uh, it looks really cool though i think it's a oh bucky o'hare that's cool I think it's a French French magazine called USA Magazine. <laughs> and then we have another USA Magazine with um, Inky Bilal cover. Oh, these are cool. Uh, another USA Magazine. And you got some nudity. Jose Magazine. Star Femmes number two. Pilot and Charlie. That looks like another French magazine. I do really like the French comic books. I just can't read French. Now, I am I love collecting foreign comics, and I think within five to ten years, you'll be able to get a pair of glasses that will translate. You put them on, and it'll be augmented reality, where it'll do like a Google Translate of all the text. So while looking at the magazine, it'll look like it's in English, and the English will probably be pretty good. They'll have an AI that will be able to translate in a way that sounds audible and sounds correct. So it'll be fun when, you know, Foreign comic books are really hard to sell right now in the U.S., but I think I want to collect them because one day, if they have those glasses, which I think will be in my lifetime and not that far off, I think it'll be really cool because you'll be able to pick up a comic like this and actually read it. So I want them before everyone else wants them. <laughs> okay, let's grab another stack. Okay, this is cool. We got a Weird Science reprint, number 20. We got a Mobius book, Elsewhere Prints, number one. That's actually really cool. I have that. But that's really awesome. I'm not sure what this is. or It just says it's all-time comics. It looks like the guy who did... Uh, oh, what was that? 
one comic book. I forget the name of the comic book. It looks interesting though. Oh, and inside it's like a completely different style of artwork. That's funny. That's cool though. I really like that. Oh, this is fun. Oh, this is cool. We got a Red Sonia number one. Good mid-grade copy of that. You know, it's got a little bit of creasing here and there, but it's probably like a fine minus to a fine. We got Giant Size Merc number one. Meanwhile, I don't know what this is. It looks interesting though. Let's look inside. Okay, the inside artwork looks interesting. It just looks like different artists did a page or two. So it's like a compilation of artwork. Oh, that's cool. I like stuff like that. Very interesting. Okay, we got another copy of this Meanwhile. I don't know the number or anything, but again, it looks like two or three pages of different artists in each issue. Uh, Southern Cross number one. That's cool. Cosplayers, five dollars. Super indie comic. A reprint of uh, Captain America number one hundred nine. I think that's like an action figure reprint. Uh, Weathercraft, free comic book day comic. Black Diamond number three. Southern Bastards number one. That's cool. Prophet number two. That's kind of a cheap comic book. Barbaric Tales number one. That actually looks kind of cool. Prophet number thirty seven. Johnny Dynamite number one. Steech, Steech, not sure what that is. <laughs> Number one, it looks looks really low budget. Oh, this is cool. Not, it's in terrible condition, but Vampirella number 19, that's cool. That's actually very cool. Comics Lit Magazine number, not sure, but that's cool. That's cool looking. And then this is cool. This is, what issue is this? All right, we have an early 2008D magazine. With Judge Dredd. That's really cool. And I believe number issue number two is his first appearance. Oh, wow. Look at that. The splash page. That's gorgeous. I love it. Oh, yeah. I love these 2080 artworks. Anytime I can get these, I'm so happy. That's awesome. Oh, I love it. What number is this? 443? I mean, 447. I'm not sure. All I know is that was really cool. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I wasn't, I don't know what to expect. <laughs> I didn't look at this package at all. Savage Sword of Conan, number 97. Johnny Focused, like a big giant comic magazine kind of thing. Don't know anything about that. Ah, this bag is fun. Shonen Jump, volume nine, issue four or number 100. Oh, this looks really cool. This is Island Issue 5. I think I have a few others from this series. If I remember correctly, it's another compilation of different artists doing a few page stories each. But the artwork looks pretty cool inside. I like the way... I like when it's kind of an indie drawn, but then it's painted. So, like, the line work that isn't blowing me away. But with the coloring, it looks really fun. This is cool. And they just have all kinds of different little art styles in here. I love comic books like that. That was really awesome. All right, what do we got? Harold something. Another super indie comic book. Uh, oh, this is an old school magazine. This is probably from the 50s. It's a college humor. I love that it has the claymation cover, though. This is such a cool looking cover. Oh, wow, that is awesome. I gotta see what date this is from. 1937. It's older than I thought. It's from the 30s. Oh, wait, wait, let me move that. And it's, all right, so it's 1930, so it's 1930s with cartoons and comics and comedy in it. Oh, that is awesome. Awesome. Wow. Okay, this is a Flexo, another super indie comic. And by super indie, I mean someone either printed it out themselves or they just got a local printer to print out, you know, 100 copies, 300 copies, 50 copies. Um, this one is signed. It looks really cool, though. I love this stuff. Um, so what I like about this stuff is you're seeing artwork and things that you might not normally see because it's really rare. And a lot of times when you're buying it directly from the artist, it might be five, ten dollars. And I just really can't afford that. So when I can get a collection of them really cheap or even in this case for free, it's kind of awesome. I have a lot of fun going through this kind of stuff. All right, we got Zonk, Cuckoo's Nest, Strange Magic. This feels just more like a pamphlet, but it looks cool. And the thing too with this stuff, oh yeah, it looks really cool. 
is I, it just has all kinds of different ways it's printed. It's not like a standard. It's different sizes, different papers, different textures. It's just a lot of fun to explore. Our Mother by Luke Howard. That looks kind of fun. This looks almost like it's screen printed. Oh, and it looks cool. It's two colors, three colors. Two colors, I think. Two color screen printing, and it looks beautiful. You just don't see comics printed like that from Marvel and whatnot. Okay, take out Deluxe. That's kind of interesting looking. Girl Galaxy. Again, super indie, indie comic, but cool looking. I like, I just like the way it looks. Mwahaha. <laughs> Everyone else is younger and more talented. Again, it looks like screen printed or I don't know. It looks very cool. Everyone loves Ramrod. This looks almost like block printed or something. I'm not 100% sure. But that, oh, that looks cool too. And then this is Swanson number three. And it just, this is like a separate piece of paper there. It looks like it's screen printed. And it just, it looks gorgeous. Just the way it's printed and everything about it. I mean, the artwork is just, you know, it's not super high style, best artist ever, but just the way it's printed and the way it feels, it's just, it's a pleasure. It's really nice. I like that. That is cool. All right, there's a lot more of this indie stuff. So I'm just going to go through it and anything that catches my eye as a little bit more interesting, I will take some time to talk about it. We have Recipe One, Secret Soup, really little mini comic. Turtle Needs Work. A little indie comic stories this one feels really low budget see some of these indie comics just they don't feel like a work of art and then other ones just feel like a work of art cowards hole like the ones this one feels like a work of art to me just the way it's printed and the way it looks it just feels like more than just uh the object itself is a work of art to me that's so cool uh, the World of Teo Matsumoto, an exhibit of original artwork by one of Japanese innovative manga creators. Okay, oh, that looks really cool. Okay, we got Plex Holistic. It has kind of like a harder cover. And inside, it, it looks cool. It reminds me of, uh, not Super GL. What was the comic book? I forget the name. Alright, this is Dragon Ball Zine. It looks like a bunch of Dragon Ball inspired fan art. And it actually looks really cool. Nice glossy paper printed nicely. That is cool. Okay, this is, uh, it looks like someone just printed it out on a regular printer and stapled it together. Not sure what it is, but it's kind of interesting. Another little teeny indie zine. Okay, we got Wild Dogs. This is, looks another like screen print. It's just one big long page. Uh, printed and folds it's kind of cool looking giant chicken wings in that also in that same kind of fold out style so that's interesting true a rat little teeny mini comic hamsters which is also that kind of pull out style so that must be all from the same person or same company smartphone comics uh, <laughs> Very low, low brow. The lowest of low brow. <laughs> oh my gosh. That one wasn't that exciting. Scraplings. This one actually looks kind of cool. It's got all kinds of single color printing. It's blue and orange, but it looks cool. Radis. This feels like newsprint almost. That's cool. Interesting at least. Pyramid scheme. And uh, it's a single color printing, like a purplish. It's kind of cool looking. Don't know why the dog was naked on the cover. <laughs> uh, not sure that comic. It's three or four. It looks like screen printing. Just it looks beautiful. I love the colors on it. New number one. Just a very kind of low budget comic. Uh, the Return of Japanese Wolves. It's on like a brown paper and it looks screen printed. Okay, that's actually kind of cool looking. Power Button by Zack Soto. That looks cool. 
Oh, I, I like the color combinations. It's basically a wash of blue with like a purple line art. It actually looks really cool. I like that. That one is fun. Okay, we got the inside case. Just a weird looking comic, but interesting. Weird, but interesting. Small drawings, 2013. And then just some random sketches this guy did, I guess. That's kind of cool. A single keyhole. And just a story of the keyhole walking around. <laughs> All right, that looks interesting. This is just a very, looks like someone just printed it out on their printer. Very low, low brow. This one's interesting. It has like a glossy cover. Complex issue three. Let's see if anything is interesting. Artwork's interesting. I, I can't say I love it, but it's just an interesting overall comic. Okay, inside my hair. This one actually looks kind of cool. Oh, and just, it folds out. Oh, I actually really like that. That one's cool. Forest Thals. It might be screen printed. Uh, I don't know. That one's kind of boring to me. Okay, the perfect sleepwalker. This feels like another one of those fold-out things. So that's cool. I actually kind of like these. The fold-out ones are interesting to me. This one looks like a, just a mini teeny letter. And I'm assuming it's like little letters or a comic inside. Yeah, it's like a little comic inside. Uh, the comic itself is not that interesting. It looks kind of screen printed. But the fact that it comes with its own little letter, that's really cool. I like the presentation a lot. I give a thumbs up for that. That's the thing with these little zines is it's very independent. So it's people just printing them up at home or paying for a small print run at a local printer. But they'll do little interesting ideas and they'll experiment. And they, it's just a fun way to explore comic books. That one's kind of boring though. There's a lot of these fold out style ones. This one... I don't know, that one's kind of boring too. All right, so I'll just, there's a bunch of these little black and white fold out ones that are not, you know, I'm not looking, I'm being like, oh man, this is awesome. I'm so happy to have it. But it's still cool to own and add to the collection. All right, Herman the Elder, colorful color, colorful interior. That's actually kind of cool looking. I like that, that's awesome. How to be cool, I actually need this. <laughs> the look. Skinniest jean. All right, that one looks kind of funny, actually. Okay, I don't know what that is. Another fold-out one. Genesis, the book according to Wet, and it's hand-stitched on the spine. It's got like a harder paper cover and size of color printing. Okay, this actually looks kind of cool. I like uh, comics like that. The indie comics like that. There are little creations of artwork. I like that. Or, you know, the actual process of making the book is the piece itself. Egg on bread. That's a boring little one. I'm not sure what this one is. It's interesting. It's like, I like the way it's printed. It's colorful. And consuming pleasure. I think that those two go together or same artist maybe. In memory of, it's a memorial of something of some sort. Don't know about that. My first character, very indie, low budget. Okay. Some of these are super duper indie. And then some of these are interesting experiments. The peeper, uh, it's kind of cool looking. It's interesting. Hawaii, 1997. Uh, I don't like anything about that one. <laughs> Regard. Uh, sort of interesting. Uh, patron Saint. Uh, sort of interesting. I like the cover. Okay. Too late. Mid-70s baseball dude. This is definitely screen printed. You can kind of feel the texture of the paint. And it's just baseball guys drawn in a simple way. But it's actually kind of fun. I like this a lot, actually. That's cool. Okay, and then we got Critical Chips 10 Contemporary Comic Essays. So it's just people writing about comic books. But that's still cool, that's very interesting. Okay, and that's it, that was the whole bag. So there's a couple of regular comic books and a whole ton of indie comics and zines and self-published comics. And some of them were really, really interesting and really awesome. Some of them were kind of just, why even try? 
you know i'm not i'm not trying to make fun of them i think it's great that they made an attempt at making a comic book but the artwork's bad the printing quality is bad there's nothing about it that's a work of art but a lot of these other ones are works of art and i love it i own like a collection that size i probably purchased four or five like that in my life so i probably have a couple maybe a long box worth of really indie comic books and i like having them i just they're fun to explore they're fun to look at they're just something a little bit different than the normal fare so very cool i hope you guys enjoyed all the comic books i went through a lot of comic books this video i love doing the comic book videos and it's a ton of fun to me and i love collecting them i love finding them i love hunting for them so if you guys enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up because i definitely want to try to do more comic videos if this is the first time you're here and you enjoyed this kind of video if you like seeing me opening up comic books showing you comic books talking about comic books please subscribe to my channel i love making content for my subscribers and for you guys that did subscribe to my channel already before my comic videos thank you i appreciate every one of you because my comic videos aren't as popular as my funko pop videos but i love doing comic book videos so i i really appreciate you guys who watch my comic videos thank you so much for watching bye